to our next video. Uh, we are going to talk again about carb cycling. Um, I know that we have been seeing a lot of comments on our page about some confusion on carb cycling. So what we want to do today is go a little more in detail on exact measurements and exactly how to get this carb cycle correct. So a lot of the comments that we see that are pretty common are people are confusing the measurements on their carbs. Now we've been hearing like 25 grams is so low or do my vegetables count towards my carbs or I'm do eating. I measure pre-cooked or post-cooked? Yeah, and I'm doing a lot of, you know, I'm eating almonds, but there's protein in those almonds. Do I count that? So we're going to explain to you how we do this carb cycle. This may be different than other things that you've read, guys. This might be different than other people's carb cycle. This is the way that Team Zero Gravity does their carb cycle. So let's get into it. Let's talk about it. Number one, we're going to talk about is vegetables. Okay? So with your vegetables, those are your green leafy vegetables. On our program, we list the vegetables that we recommend using, which are... Typical ones are broccoli, green beans, cauliflower, zucchini, squash, typical greens like that. So on those carbs, those are the ones we do not count those. On the program, you'll see it says that we don't count those towards our total, total number of carbs. We use vegetables as fillers. So we don't want to go crazy on those, but those are in between in meals when it's on a low carb day. When you're hungry, those are things that you could put in so you're not starving on your high carb day. So those are fillers, right? So we use those. So number one, green leafy vegetables, we do not count towards the number on our carbohydrates. Now there are several vegetables that we do not allow on the carb cycle, which would be like corn. Corn, peas, um, tomatoes and carrots in large quantity. So using like just steamed carrots as the vegetable, we wouldn't want to do just due to the higher sugar content found in those carbs. So like we said, the free carbs that we're eating, the free vegetables are your green leafy vegetables. Those are the ones you want to stick to. All right. Now, vegetables are out of the way. That's an easy one. Let's go into the proteins. All right, guys. So your protein sources are your basic proteins. We want to stick with the leaner sources of protein. So chicken breast is number one. White meat chicken is number one. Egg whites, number two. Uh, we have lean cuts of red meat, lean beef, right? Uh, turkey. Lean turkey, extra lean turkey. All white meat and the leaner cuts of red beef. Fish, white fish, all fish, right? Those, so those are your protein sources. Those are your basic proteins. Now, a lot of the people are asking questions about what about the fat content in the protein? Do I count that? The answer is no. Because we're going to be sticking with only the lean proteins. So we're not doing fatty beef. And we're not, doing, uh, we're not doing dark meat chicken. We're doing lean proteins. So we do not count the trace fats in those. We just count those towards our protein. Right? So what are the ones we should tell them to avoid? Um, whole eggs. We, we don't use those as our source for the eggs. We like the egg whites. Again, you mentioned we use chicken breast, the white meat, not the dark meat. The fish, a lot of uh, people have been asking about shrimp. Shrimp is okay to have. It's, it falls into that white fish category. Uh, certain fish you might want to stay away from, obviously, is fried fish. And yes, salmon is very good. It is higher on a fat count, but we do allow the salmon. All right, so when we're talking about proteins, we got it down. We're going to go lean proteins. We got lean proteins and we have vegetables covered, okay? Now, here's what we're going to talk about now, the biggest one everybody wants to know. Well, not big, we'll save the carbs for last. We're gonna go into fats. So, when we talk about fats, we have, these are additional fat sources. So let's say on your low carb day, we gave you 50 grams of fats. So what would 50 grams of fats look like? We love to use avocados, almonds, you can use nut butters, like almond butters. We just make sure that they are all natural so they don't have any oils in them or added sugar. So make sure you do read the nutrition label, not just the front, but also the back. So for the fat sources, the added fats that we're using, again, the easiest is counting out almonds. One almond is about 0.6 grams of fat. So one of the easiest ways to do is just say it's half a gram of fat. And if you're looking for 25 grams of fat, just pull out 50 almonds. You can break that up throughout your day or eat them at one setting, but that's gonna be your easiest. Now the most important thing to do guys when you're doing this carb cycle is looking at the labels. Looking at your nutrition facts. This is the most important part. This is going to tell you everything. 
per serving, how many grams are on here. This is what you have to pay attention to, right? So this, now a lot of the people have been asking the question, just like we are not crossing over trace fats in our protein, we are not going to cross over the proteins from our fats. So we are, each one of our things is staying in their own categories. So we're counting our fats as fats. On here, it would say there is a little bit of protein. This is not a great protein source. So we're not counting this towards our total number, number of protein. Protein is coming from our protein that we put in that we just mentioned, our vegetables, our empty calories, those are the ones we're using as fillers, and our fats are staying in the fat category. We're not going to cross count these okay. numbers. Because these also contain a trace amount of carbs too. But again, we do not count these towards our total carb intake for the day. So keep them all in their own category. All right, now we're going to go into the most important. The most important is the carbs. Now I've heard a lot of things like 25 grams is so low or 50 grams doesn't seem like a lot. And I think this is because people are miscalculating their measurements. So let's get into how you measure this, guys. Now this is the biggest difference. Most of your products have a label like oatmeal. So this is where we have to stay really, really, really focused on reading these labels. If we do 25 grams of carbs, that is going to come in a half cup, right? Yep. So half cup serving. Fill it. That right there, uncooked, is 25 grams of carbs. Once you cook this, it's going to expand, right? And it's going to be about a cup, at least depending on how much water you add to it. This would be your carbs for a 25 gram day, right? That's a half cup. Now what I would recommend is breaking that up into two different meals, right? So, quarter cup. Quarter cup of oatmeal, two times a day in two of your meals, that's your 25 grams. Now, 25 grams is a starting number for most people and we usually don't stay that low. But we are not counting, again, the vegetables and everything else you get. So, we're doing 25 grams complex carbohydrates, right. which would be a half cup of oatmeal. Throughout the rest of the day in your other meals, you can put broccoli, You can put all the green spinach. vegetables. But again, we measure the oats by the half cup serving. 25 grams is the nutritional gram. It's not the weighted gram. You'll see on the label, it shows what a half a cup in weighted grams is. It's 40 grams of weight. But again, that half cup is 27 grams carbs. So when we're talking about grams, again, we're talking about the actual nutrition gram, not the weighted gram. Yeah, that's really important, guys, to pay attention to. When we're talking about the grams of carbs, like she said, it's nutritional grams, not grams on the scale. Okay? So now here we're going to get real confusing. This is going to mess everybody up. So how do we know how many grams of carbs are in a potato? The easiest way with most of all the, again, the protein is always, we like to measure it after it's been cooked. Again, because you're getting the water out of the protein. Or in potatoes, they hold a lot of water, so I like to measure them uh, after they're cooked. But the best way to do it is you're going to just place it on a scale, and then you're just going to measure out four ounces. Now four ounces is going to give you, right here, 25 grams of carbs. So you can cook this any way you want, you can steam it, you can boil it, you can bake it, and that's up to you, but you weigh it out as far as ounces. So this is where a lot of people get confused. We're measuring everything in grams, but when we're weighing, we're not weighing, it's not weight grams, it's nutritional grams, right? So four ounces on a scale of potatoes is 25 grams of nutritional grams of carbohydrates. There's a big difference, guys. We're not weighing these out in grams because if you were going to do 25 grams of weight, you would be eating one bite Maybe of potato. One, one bite of that potato. And that would be crazy low. <laughs> so where a lot of people are thinking that they're pretty low on their carbs, I think that you guys are confusing nutritional grams and weight grams. Big difference, right? So we give you a sheet in there where you can break down how many ounces it takes to make certain grams of the foods that we allow in the program. And we're, we'll release that, that list to you. It's kind of a little cheat sheet, but you can also go and Google those and say, how many grams of carbs are in how many ounces of potatoes? 
and it's pretty easy to figure out. So we are looking for nutritional grams, not weight grams, yeah. right? All right, so good sources of carbs, not just potatoes. Number one source of carbohydrates, which is good for all you athletes in China, is rice. Luckily for you guys in China, one of my favorite sources is white rice. We have different kinds of rice. We have white rice, brown rice, jasmine rice. There's all different kinds. Each one of those are gonna have a slightly different measurement. So, Taylor, explain to them the difference and how they're gonna get their measurement of carbs. The only difference is going to be just very small differences in the grams, of uh, nutritional grams. So, for the easiest measurement, brown rice is easy. You just scoop out half a cup. That's 25 grams of carbs. Now, if you're using something like a long grain rice, a white rice, a jasmine rice, basmati rice, it's only 10 grams higher just due to the, the rice content. But again, if you measured out half a cup of cooked rice, that'd be about 35 grams of carbs. So just make sure you take that into consideration on your high days. I usually have, if it's a low day, like a 25 gram day or a 50 day, we stick with brown rice just because you're gonna get more per serving. But the guys, when they go up to six, 800 grams of carbs, you're definitely going to be choosing more of a jasmine rice. All right, so with the rice, you're gonna have brown rice that's gonna measure out to 25 grams of carbs per quarter cup. Now the jasmine rice is gonna measure a little bit higher, but it's only about 10 grams higher. So a quarter cup of jasmine rice is 35 to 36 grams of carbs. So make sure you just take that into consideration when cooking your rice and make those adjustments for that quarter cup. Now guys, when we're doing this, we're gonna make it nice and simple. These are all measurements that you're gonna use uncooked, pre-cooked, right? Because it changes a lot. So once you're cooking rice, you understand that when you do a quarter cup uncooked, it's gonna cook into a large amount of rice. So we're not talking about cooked measurements here, guys. We're making it nice and simple for you. All these measurements are uncooked. Then you can also look for more information online, it's pretty easy nowadays to have to find out measuring charts. And again, sticking to reading the nutrition facts on the back. It's going to tell you the, aside, the amount of volume per serving. And it's pretty easy. It gives it all to you in measurements that are dry. So the dry measurements are on the bag. Follow the nutrition facts. It's pretty simple. So once we put this all together, guys, now you understand. You have your carb count, your fat count your protein count, and we keep all of those completely separate from each other. Those are all in their own category. So, throughout a day, a normal meal, let's say I want to get in my meal, my first meal, I'm a guy and I'm on 100 grams of carbs today, and it's my low day. So what does that look like to me? That means I have 100 grams of carbs, 50 grams of fat, and I have 250 grams of protein in my low day. Well, 250 grams of protein, that's a lot of protein. Right, so that's gonna be me eating six to eight ounces of meal for six meals a day. With every one of those meals, for the first four, I'm gonna go ahead and have 25 grams of carbs in each one of my first meals for the first four. Right, so that's gonna be, for me, I'm gonna be doing this half cup of oatmeal per meal for the first four meals, and I also get my fat. So I get 50 grams of fat. So if you guys know from almonds, like Taylor said, 25 grams is about 50 almonds. So I get 100 almonds today, right? I get 100 almonds today on my, on my fat day. Now, so my day is going to look like this. I get 100 almonds, so I'm going to break these up into 25 almonds in each one of my meals for my first four meals. I'm going to have a half cup of oatmeal in every meal for my first four meals, and I'm gonna have eight ounces of egg whites or chicken in those first in every meal for my first four meals. My last two meals are gonna be just my protein, whether it's gonna be lean beef, maybe some extra lean ground turkey, maybe some chicken, whichever I decide, and then I'm gonna use some vegetables in those meals, in my last two meals, to be fillers. That one, I'm not gonna add any extra fats, and I'm not gonna add any extra uh, carbohydrates. So that's going to be just green leafy vegetables. So I might do a chicken breast with some broccoli or, you know, some, some egg whites and some spinach. Maybe a couple mushrooms or something like that in there and make an omelet. That's going to be, that's going to be my day. So that's a typical example of what a 100 gram day would look like, guys. So take this information, 
Hopefully you guys can utilize this in your carb cycle and you have a little bit better understanding of what it is to carb cycle, what the measurements look like, and hopefully this adds to your success and help you guys get on this, get started, and uh, I look forward to seeing your results.